It was the largest street protest in Malaysia for almost a decade, a march of thousands of political and civil activists attempting to deliver a petition to the king, asking for reform of the electoral system. They were greeted by water cannons and tear gas and told to disperse because they'd been denied a permit. I'm Taymor Nabili, and on this edition of 101 East, we ask, in the run-up to a general election, is the political opposition in Malaysia being stifled? Initial police estimates spoke of 4,000 marches. Organizers said at least 40,000. Government said police tactics were reasonable and non-violent. Organizers argued excessive force was used. And the local press hardly mentioned the event at all, while Al Jazeera was criticized for being unfair. Our correspondent, Hamish MacDonald, was there. It was the biggest protest in Malaysia in a decade. Tear gas and liquid chemicals were used to subdue the crowd. But according to most of Malaysia's domestic media, barely anything happened at all. It was Saturday the 10th of November. Police had been taking up positions all morning around Medeca Square the site where Malaysia's independence was declared half a century ago. Up to 40,000 protesters were expected to gather, demanding electoral reforms. The rally was organized by dozens of non-governmental organizations and backed by opposition groups from the parliament, among them the People's Justice Party, spearheaded by the former Deputy Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. And I think it is a good signal that Malaysians want freedom and democracy and want free and fair elections. And clearly Prime Minister Abul Abadawi and the cabinet are uh, complicit to this crime of cheating Malaysians from having fair and free elections. But many of those joining the rally were not Anwar supporters. Indeed, some even thought he had hijacked the reform issue. Thousands waited at the National Mosque and few could get anywhere near Medeca Square because of the heavy police presence. Public gatherings of more than five people require a permit in Malaysia and this protest had been declared illegal. The authorities said it would create traffic hassles and jeopardize public security. By 2 p.m. as people gathered around Masjid Jamek, one of Malaysia's most historic mosques, a confrontation with police quickly developed. Police trucks tried to scatter the crowd, but that failed, and they quickly turned to water cannons, spraying a painful chemical liquid. The police have just sprayed chemicals on the entire crowd. This was, until a few moments ago, an entirely peaceful protest but they've just come along and sprayed chemicals into the faces of hundreds and hundreds of protesters. Many ran into the mosque seeking refuge and screaming slogans. Few were deterred and the crowd emerged once again to take on the police and the chemical sprays. Under the rail tracks, a water pipe had burst and dozens washed the chemicals from their skin. Do you think the people are afraid of the authorities? They are not afraid. That I can assure you. But the police had another weapon. Tear gas was fired this time, sending the crowd running. Most fled eventually. The sting of the chemicals was too much for many to bear. While the rally continued, the information minister came on Al Jazeera and denied the crackdown was happening. You come here, you want to project us like a democratic country. This is a democratic country. So right? why can't people protest then if it's a democratic yeah, people country? Protest, people do, first they protest. We are allowing protest and they have demonstrated. But we are just trying to disperse them. Elsewhere, the rally remained peaceful and thousands marched on the Sultan's palace. It was there a petition was handed over demanding Malaysia's democratic systems be cleaned up ahead of elections, 
which could be held as early as next year. Malaysia presents itself as a modern democracy, but those values are being put to the test by this new spirit of public action. Joining me in the studio to talk about the events of Saturday the 10th, Kairi Jamaluddin, who's the deputy UMNO youth leader and the son-in-law of the present Malaysian prime minister. Also, the government minister, Nazri Abdul Aziz, and human rights lawyer, Malik Intiaz Sawar. Gentlemen, thank you all for being with us today. Let's begin, if we could, by getting a, a, an idea of what happened on that weekend, because there are many different perspectives on what exactly was going on. Minister, let me begin with you. I was in my constituency, and I was told that uh, the police, from the papers that I read, that the police had uh, uh, a few uh, police blocks outside the city uh, to prevent people from coming in, uh, for obvious reasons. The fear that there might be weapons uh, which uh, may be used by uh, pe irresponsible people, not necessarily the demonstrators. Um, and, um, and I was told there were um, a group of people specially um, distributed uh, over so many areas trying to come into Kuala Lumpur. Okay. Malikim Teasawa, what was your interpretation? All right. Um, as, as early as Friday night, the police started screening um, entry into Kuala Lumpur. I've read of roadblocks up north and down south trying to deter uh, people coming in for the rally. Um, people started moving into KL by about 10, 11 o'clock. I, I, I myself was caught in a traffic jam as early as 9 o'clock. So to say that the traffic jams were caused by the rally itself, I don't think is correct. Uh, the police roadblocks themselves caused, the, ro uh, caused the, the, the jams. And then by about 3 o'clock, the, the event kicked off. Uh, there was some commotion in um, Masjid Jamik area. And I think there was a new screw from Al Jazeera that caught some of that. But um, the, the media, the official media, have actually spun it as if that was the only event. Mm -hmm. What actually happened was a group of, some people are putting it as high as 60,000 people assembled outside the King's Palace, which was the objective, to walk to the King's Palace as a, as a show of uh, solidarity uh, among civil society and present the memorandum which was, which was done. Do you think it was handled well? either in a political or a policing uh, way? Mm -hmm. Firstly, I think the policing was, was absolutely uh, well handled by the Royal Malaysian Police in terms of the restraint they showed, in terms of the crowd control, in terms of managing the traffic flows. MTR said just now the traffic was not caused by the, the, the people participating in the demonstration, but by the police. But the police were doing the roadblocks, were, were handling the roadblocks precisely because there was a demonstration. All so right. it always gets back to that. MTR, let me come back to you. I mean, for, just to respond for, to that point that you just made, was it well handled? Well, I have mixed feelings about this. I think I've heard stories of how some police officers actually assisted uh, marches as they moved to the Agung's palace. But then I also, have, I also have information about what happened in Masjid Jamek. I've also read of some use of force, some say unnecessary use of force uh, in Jalan Maharaja Leila. So my sense of it is it's fairly mixed. The government information minister has accused Al Jazeera of uh, wrongly saying that force was used, and yet in the very next breath, he said only water cannon and tear gas were used. Now, where is the line between force and non-force? Well, um, you know, you have to disperse uh, the assembly. There are no other means to do so, and the only uh, legitimate means is to use the water cannon and uh, also to use the tear gas. And, uh, and I know the police has not used um, uh, any force because uh, for obvious reasons, uh, uh, you know, the world has known that uh, there's going to be a big rally on the 10th. And uh, we were under public scrutiny, not just in Malaysia. Al Jazeera, you know, within minutes can um, uh, distribute uh, whatever information to the whole world. So that's very pretty obvious that the police will not use any force because we were under close scrutiny by the whole world. When 20, 40, 60,000 people descend upon the center of town, at what point do you decide that the rational way to handle this is to try and get them to go away rather than just say, OK, get on with it, get it over with, and let's move on? The point is they can't do this because, you know, we have uh, Section 27 of the uh, Police Act, which does not allow for this. And we also have uh, Section 141 under the Penal Code, which also does not allow for this, for obvious reasons, because 
Uh, the law allows for marches. It's merely a matter of no, political decision no, to say this is, one is okay, that no, one isn't. We don't allow this because we have uh, historical backgrounds to this. Uh, we are a multi-ethnic uh, uh, country. Uh, My point being that, let's say, if UMNO had applied for a, a permit to the police to go to the, the, the king's house and present a petition, do you think that would have been granted? It can I, can I, been can I just answer your original question it would have not been about, about when the police decides on how to handle this? I think they decided to handle it precisely how you described it, which was after a while, the, the demonstrators, the protesters, those gathered there, were allowed to go to the king's uh, residence, palace, and hand over the memorandum. And that's precisely what after happened. After a while, after the that, water gas, That's the precisely what used. happened. The water cannons and the, and the tear gas was contained, were contained to a particular area, which uh, Imtiaz referred to earlier. But, Is, but the others were allowed, as he said, were allowed, were given free passage to the palace to hand over the memorandum. So these are all police standard operating procedures. The characterization of, of people who are demanding or, or at least suggesting political changes uh, as somehow being dangerous to the environment, how, how do you respond to that? I, I don't agree with that characterization at all. I think there was a different way you could have handled this. Uh, there could have been negotiations and we've heard no information about an attempt by the police to negotiate with the leaders of the groups that were marching in. And I think if the whole point had been to shunt them to the Agong's palace, that could have happened. There was no need to open up with the water cannons. There was no need to spray water which we know is laced with chemicals. We'll be back in just a few more minutes. Stay with us.